Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 15 of the chapter Equilibrium. In this video, I am going to tell you about the relationship between the equilibrium constant that is K, the reaction quotient that is Q and Gibbs free energy which is delta G or G. When we studied thermodynamics, in the videos which were numbered from about 26 to 31, I had been discussing about the Gibbs free energy and later in videos 30 and 31, I did tell you about its relationship with equilibrium constant or um, in terms of equilibrium constant or chemical equilibrium, how we can relate the thermodynamics to it. So we are now going to study that a little more clearly. Now that we know what Kc is, the value of Kc or equilibrium constant does not depend on the rate of the reaction. A reaction may be fast or slow in the forward and backward direction and when the reaction proceeds in a certain direction to attain equilibrium, once it attains equilibrium, the concentrations of the reactants and products, they become constant. And equilibrium constant is calculated from the concentrations of the reactants and the products. So it does not depend on how fast the reaction took place or how fast or how slow the equilibrium was achieved. The only factors that equilibrium was achieved and these were the concentrations of the reactants and the products at equilibrium. So we find that equilibrium constant does not depend on the rate at which equilibrium was established but it does depend on the thermodynamics of the reaction. So it, and in thermodynamics, it mainly depends on the value of delta G, that is the change in free energy. What is free energy? It is the amount of energy that is free to carry out work in a chemical reaction. So whatever thermodynamic changes it is bringing about, after using up all those uh, all that energy, whatever energy is left free to do work, that is known as the Gibbs free energy and that change in a particular reaction, how much of Gibbs free energy is available or not available, gives you the value of delta G. <clears throat> we also studied in thermodynamics that the sign of delta G gives us an idea about the spontaneity of a reaction. If the value of delta G is negative, the reaction is feasible, it is, it is spontaneous, it happens on its own because delta G, the value of delta G, if it is negative, the reaction is spontaneous. At this point, if you are unable to understand what I am saying, I would encourage you to view the videos related to free energy in the chapter thermodynamics and I will proceed here with this, assuming that you already have studied that. If delta G is positive, we know reaction is non-spontaneous. And when we are talking of equilibrium, we know the reaction is a reversible reaction. Then when we talk of spontaneity or non-spontaneity, we are talking of the reaction in the forward direction. Because whatever is the sign in the forward direction, in the backward direction, the sign would be opposite. So if heat is being given out in the forward direction, for the reaction in the backward direction, heat is being that same amount of heat is being absorbed. So if amount, <coughs> if delta G is negative in the forward direction, then delta G, the value would remain the same, but it will be positive in the backward direction. So in this case, when we are talking delta G is negative, I'm talking of it in the forward direction. So if delta G is negative, then reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction. But if delta G is positive, the reaction is non-spontaneous. It does not take place in the spontaneously in the forward direction. But in the backward direction, definitely this is the one that will be spontaneous and that is the one that will be non-spontaneous in the backward direction. But if the value of delta G is equal to zero, then we say the reaction has already attained equilibrium. It is already present at equilibrium. And that is the reason why when at equilibrium all concentrations become the same, the rates of both the reactions become the same. And when we say in one direction delta G is positive, in the backward direction delta G is negative and the numerical value is the same. So delta G at equilibrium would become equal to zero because whatever change is occurring in one direction and opposite change is occurring in the other direction and therefore delta G becomes equal to zero. So we say Delta G is zero and that at that point we say that the reaction has achieved equilibrium and there is no free energy left to drive the reaction. 
if we had to write a mathematical expression for the thermodynamic view of equilibrium now what are we doing we are combining since equilibrium constant is dependent on thermodynamics we are now combining these two concepts of the heat and equilibrium so if we had need a mathematical expression for this we would get this equation that is delta g that is the change in free energy is equal to now look this is also delta g but it's delta g not so change in free energy is equal to the standard free energy change what is standard if you remember the standard temperature pressure conditions they are 298 kelvin one bar pressure and under standard conditions where a chemical reaction takes place when we say all the substances are in their standard states we mean that under standard conditions which is the purest form in which that particular substance is present so under those standard conditions the value of delta g negative or not we call it delta g not is known as the standard gibbs free energy change so delta g that is free energy change whether under standard conditions or not under standard conditions is equal to the free energy change under standard conditions plus r t l n q where r is the uh, rydberg's constant or the gas constant t is the temperature and l n q l n is log and natural log and q is what is q it is the reaction quotient and what is reaction quotient let me remind you once again we did it two um, videos earlier reaction quotient q is nothing but the uh, concentrations of the products divided by the concentrations of the reactants at any time when the equilibrium has not been established so at any time during the reaction but at equilibrium when equilibrium is achieved at that point we already know that delta g is equal to zero so at equilibrium delta g is zero so this becomes zero but delta g not under standard conditions still applies so at equilibrium delta g is zero and the reaction quotient is nothing but uh, at uh, equilibrium reaction quotient and kc are the same thing because reaction quotient and kc have the same that is the equilibrium constant have the same formula the only difference is that kc is are the concentrations at equilibrium while qc are the concentrations of the reactants and products when equilibrium has not been established so we would say at equilibrium delta g is zero and q is equal to kc so substituting this in this expression what do we get that delta g that is equal to delta g not plus rt ln k now this becomes k is equal to zero and i'm writing only k because in terms of concentration it would be kc in terms of partial pressures it would be kp now delta g not since delta g is equal to zero we use this part of the equation and we say delta g not is equal to minus rt ln k just a mathematical adjustment now we take ln k on one side and take rest of the stuff on the other side so what do we get ln k is equal to minus ln k would be equal to the minus goes this side delta g upon rt <clears throat> why have we done this because we want to get rid of the ln that is the log the natural log in order to get rid of the natural log what do we do we take the anti log of uh, this quantity so if you want to remove the log here you take anti log and you take it on both sides in order to have not change the actual equation so taking anti log on both sides what do you get ln k becomes k because anti log of uh, log is log k anti log of log k would be k would be equal to this we we'll get in the exponential form e to the power of minus delta g not upon rt this equation is very very important because this is the one that relates and tells you about the gibbs free energy it tells you about it helps you to interpret why a reaction is spontaneous why if delta g is negative uh, a reaction is spontaneous you it helps you to understand that better so let us see why this happens mathematically to understand this the reaction spontaneity can be interpreted from this equation if delta g not is negative now when we said delta g is negative delta g is positive delta g is equal to zero if we talk in terms of delta g not also let us see what happens if delta g not is negative then this value delta g not is negative it means negative into a negative value you will get this value to be positive 
and if this value is positive then k would have a positive value if this value is positive the whatever to the power of it is then k becomes positive what does k being positive mean what is k k is kc is nothing but the concentrations of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by concentrations of reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients so in other words k is nothing but the ratio of the concentrations of the products to the concentrations of the reactants if the value of k is if the concentration of products and reactants is equal the value of k would be 1 right if the concentration of products is more than the concentration of reactants then the value of k would be greater than 1 but if the concentration of reactants is less than the concentration of products then the value of k would be less right so we say if delta g is negative then minus delta g r t is positive and therefore k is positive which implies if k is positive it means the concentration of the products is more than the concentration of the reactants when does this happen the concentration of products is more and the concentration of reactants is less this happens when the reaction has almost occurred to completion it means that such a reaction which reaction will occur to completion on its own a spontaneous reaction so this gives us an idea why the reaction is spontaneous if delta g is a negative but if delta g naught is positive then we get minus delta g naught upon rt would be a negative value and e to the to a negative power that would give you the value of k to be negative and if value of k is negative then it means that the concentration of the reactants is much much higher than the concentration of the product when would this happen when the reaction hardly proceeded you had reactants and you did not have products in the beginning and even after a great while we find that the reactants the concentration of the reactants still is very high at equilibrium and the concentration of the products is still very low so what does it mean that this reaction is not taking place happily the reactants are not really ready to react to give you the products so such a reaction would be non-spontaneous so if delta g is positive then minus delta g over rt would be a negative value and if that's a negative value then the value of k would be negative and the concentration of the reactants would be much much greater which indicates that they hardly reacted with each other to give you the products so that gives us an idea that the reaction is non-spontaneous i'm sorry i'd like to make a correction here when delta g naught is negative then minus delta g naught upon rt is positive which means that k is greater than 1 i have by mistake said that k is uh, positive and in the next point i say that if delta g naught is positive then minus delta g naught upon rt is negative and therefore k is uh, negative k is not negative it should be k is less than 1 so when k is greater than 1 it means that the concentration of the products in the numerators in the numerator is higher and when k is less than 1 at that time it means that the concentration of the reactants is greater than the concentration of the products so that tells us about the spontaneity of the reaction that is if the concentration of products is more then k is greater than 1 and the reaction is spontaneous and if the concentration of the reactants is more, then K is less than 1 and the reaction is non-spontaneous. Now with this, I will end this video. And in the next video, I'll solve two numerical problems just to explain this a little better. So if you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.